What is up players? It is Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to a little video where I'm showing off my completed work for a commission project. It is from the Army Range for the game Retro Sci-Fi AE World War II. And the army is the German Geneticist Starter Force. So this is from a company called Blackball Games, and um, they've I've seen some great sculpts and concepts and uh, green, I guess you would call them, I guess test sculpts of of their newest models that they're they're coming up with, and it looks really cool. It's like a alternate history, weird World War II kind of themed game where the uh, Nazis delve into like mad science and black magic to help win the war. The Russians, who I'll show you when I'm finished with those models, turn to psychic powers and uh, using their, their minds and their getting in touch with their psycho psychic powers in order to, I guess, uh, train and, and direct these little chimpanzee monkeys to fight for them. The Americans, I think, according to the fluff, they resort to their Ameri Native American Indians turning into Wendigos and uh, the hoodoo from the the Nolans kind of voodoo hoodoo uh, culture and yeah really interesting concept for a game I think the miniatures are uh, overall pretty well done sculpting wise unfortunately I had a lot of difficulty getting the arms and the heads to kind of sit in their uh, in their spots and they're in metal so um, I, I tried to use you definitely want to use super glue and uh, I cleaned all of the, the components first with some soap and warm water. Make sure there's no release agent left on the pieces. And then uh, I even used a little bit of liquid green stuff. But unfortunately, sometimes the arms would snap off while after I primed them. And uh, just a little bit difficult to work with. But uh, I think that also has to do with the arms being so small compared to I guess a space marine or a 40k heroic scale model these guys are a little bit more realistically proportioned so today we're going to take a look at this force that I did and you've got your officer there uh, dressed all in black very sinister looking this this one character has I think an eye patch on the right eye but I went with the head that has the like a monocle hanging off of the left eye Really, really cool. You've got alternate arms, alternate heads for some of these. Um, you really want to try to build your models to look like the ones out here. They're not kind of one component fits all and you can kit bash and convert them however you want. At least that, that's that's how I found otherwise the the arms and the um, the the joints get all janky. Then down here you've got three living, I think they're called emaciated troopers. They're basically like Frankenstein's monsters. And you've got your mad doctor here. So I went with the mad doctor that has a like a side part haircut, very, very weird and eccentric looking and glasses. And I think it's a great piece here. Here are all the models. We'll take a look at them one by one. But first, like I said, I want to take a look at the mad doctor here. I decided to make him this kind of dark dirty blonde hair colored and that's basically my Xandri dust shaded with seraphim sepia highlighted back up with Xandri dust adding in a little bit of palette witch flesh and then uh, shading or glazing rather with seraphim sepia after that the white lab coat was great fun to paint it was just basically Vallejo's white shaded with known oil and then brought back up using the known oil to kind of dictate where the shadows are in the folds he's got a lot of vials and i guess syringes and uh, beakers and flasks all over him i found that the my favorite way of doing glass containers is to paint the bottom of the container first so let's take a look at the syringe for example i wanted to do a, a really creepy green looking uh, glowy substance there so i used warpstone green and then i highlighted up with moot green added in a little bit of vallejo's white and after i highlighted that up i painted the top area which had been primed black i used i think it was a Sh Re dark reaper and then I highlighted with rust gray and then when you put a little bit of gloss coat on it it creates this really awesome glass looking effect 
So shiny glass, I did that with the blood and the fluids down here in these beakers. I did it on the back with the syringes there. You can see for his little hand saw, it, it's got a little bit of blood on it. He's been doing some work. So that's the Tamiya Clear Red mixed in with some Abaddon Black. The skin tone is, I wanted to do a very pallid and pale and a very unhealthy looking skin tone for our good doctor here. So I went with Rackard Flesh shaded with Raiklin Flesh shade and then doing a little bit of Drukai Violet, which is purple. And when you shade your very sickly pale bone colored skin with purple, it creates this really nasty, like bruised and unhealthy kind of sallow color. And then I highlighted back up by just glazing a little bit of Rackard Flesh thin down so that it creates a, a natural lightening, but then there's an interesting, I guess, reflectiveness and shine to the, the skin that I, I loved. And I, it kind of makes me think of when you're working in uh, in the dark, in the basement, and or this mad doctor who's working in, in his laboratory never gets out to see the sun. He's always clammy and sweaty, and um, it just, it's just very, very unhealthy. For the glasses, I did the same thing as I did for the syringe and any glass vials. I just basically did Dark Reaper, highlighted with rust gray, and then a little bit of art coat. And the great thing about that is the art coat makes it reflective. So if you turn your models certain angles and it catches the light, like right there, it, it looks like the light is reflecting off of his eyeglasses. And it creates this very cool effect. The trousers are the standard uh, German kind of khaki that uh, a lot of their, their uniforms had. And I was actually gonna go with black pants and then I did some, some checking and it looks like the model here has some dark brown trousers. And I think I'm pretty accurate to, to the model there on the, uh, given as an example. I didn't wanna do too much blood on my models here because uh, for the commission I wanted, I, I, I didn't wanna uh, make, make it too, bloody and gory for my client there. All right, let's move on to his experiments. You've got three emaciated troopers. And I just said I didn't use too much blood and yet these guys are just all begging for that kind of extra effect. You could really go to town by painting blood effects on their, their weapons, their limbs, their metallic augmented limbs. Uh, I did do because they're, they've got tubes pumping in like liquid and kind of chemicals. I went with red to kind of simulate the chemicals mixing with their blood. It's it kind of copies the artwork here, but um, a lot less blood on the models than in the artwork. You've got two options for arms and for heads. The normal one, which I really like, are these kind of Death Corps of Krieg standard World War One gas masks with the snout, but you only get two of those. So for your third guy, I had to use one of these weird, like two, little breathing apparatus on the side slash gimp masks. And I, I don't even know what that's about, but to do the black leather, I just painted Abaddon on black, highlighted with dark reaper and rust gray. For my uh, eye lens for the, for the gas masks, I did to me a clear red. It creates this very nice spooky dark red reflective kind of lens effect. And the trousers I painted accordingly with the Russian uniforms, because I think in the fluff, it says that some of these experiments are done on prisoners of war. And so the uh, mad doctor is using, I guess, cadavers or prisoners to create these monstrosities. So I'm painting them to look like uh, Russian uniform pants. The skin is done the same way as I did the, the evil doctor there, but I highlighted a little bit more, I added a little bit more Rackard flesh to the highlight because I wanted to show that really pale, pasty skin color that these cadavers have been worked on for, for quite some time. And they are, there we go, they are really, really sickly looking and uh, not used to being out in the sunlight. The backs, uh, the, these vials sticking out, and it reminds me a lot of the Dark Eldar uh, Talos Pain Engine, or I think one of those Dark Eldar um, monstrosities, kind of Frankenstein monsters that Dark Eldar have, have these vials stuck into their spine. So that's kind of how I did this one. Warpstone Green with a little bit of Moot Green as a highlight, and then 
coated with some art coat for a nice reflective shine. So there you go there. You can see I did the glass effect on the tops of all of these vials to create the effect that the chemicals are slowly draining up, pumping up into him. Two more models to show you. You've got these German troopers here. Very much like my Death Corps of Krieg from Forge World. Let's see if we can get a get a focus on them. There we go. So I painted them up with oops, Dark Reaper, followed by Rust Gray, and shaded with Agrax Earthshade, highlighted back up. Uh, beautiful, beautiful models. Really, really well done, I think. And um, yeah, just a little bit of weathering and shading. The islands, again, nice dark red to kind of give them a very sinister and inhuman quality. Their gas masks, or their masks, are actually uh, just black. I painted just black, Abaddon black, and then a little bit of art coat to create a kind of reflective leather look to it. Okay, so that's these two guys. And the final model in our showcase today is our officer there. I think you might, if you've seen my last video with a uh, World War II uh, models on it, I've um, kind of showed this guy off. So I did the reflective leather for his boots, for the brim of his cap, some white to do the lining on his collar, his hat, and his shoulder uh, shoulder pips there, some gold for the eagle insignia, and yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this little um, wrap-up showcase. Beautiful figures. I would highly suggest you pick them up if you're a collector and into this kind of weird, crazy stuff. And I want to thank you for watching. See you in the next video.